2019. We ain't figured out yet that it don't matter how quick you delete something, if it was revealing a body, prejudice, or just a shitty nasty attitude that it's never really gone. We ain't figured that out yet. Hi guys, my name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel. As you guys can see, I am not in my apartment. I don't know if you ever watched any of my vlogs, but this is not my couch. I am not at home. I no longer have an apartment. I am very transient at the moment. I've been traveling all over the place. Right now, I am in Texas and I wasn't going to film anything, but I logged on to Beyonce's internet this morning and saw some shit that just really burned my ass. So let's talk about it. Last night, I kind of saw little glimpses of this little, little piece of an article Sarah Dessen um, retweeted where is it so um, she tweeted it with the her words authors are real people we put our heart and soul into the stories we write often because it is literally how we survive in this world I'm having a really hard time right now and this is just mean and cruel I hope it made you feel good I was like oh that's kind of fucked up yo that damn I mean like I've read her books I have opinions on them that are not altogether positive or really very positive at all but I still was like, bro, that's kind of fucked up. And I just ignored it um, further after that. Because, eh, whatever. And then I log on, like I said, to, you know, I, I got online this morning um, just scrolling Twitter. And the first thing I see is someone's tweet that says, Sarah Destin scribbled the name out of that screenshot she tweeted to make it harder for you to Google the article. Now, if it's the article posted online, I can take like two sentences put it in there with her name and find it with Sarah Destin's name um, and find out the book that was picked over hers is about the persecution of black people within the criminal justice system at that case I was like nah what hold the fuck up so then I started looking into it and like oh who getting salty because they chose a black book which is what the kind of makes it sound like but it wasn't a race thing I don't think it was a it was more like a pick me kind of thing but we'll get into that so the full little clip that she posted was this that was the year they ended up picking Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. It was incredible. So that became the book I supported, she said, who majored in English and is now working on a master's degree in Florida. That's how I sort of inadvertently joined the Common Read Committee. That was Katie Olson's favorite Common Read book. Not only was it an extremely moving book that spoke about the injustice that can occur within our justice system through the stories of real people, but personally meeting and hearing from one of the individuals we read about was an especially powerful experience. So. I was like, okay, what is this committee? What are we, what, what are we talking about? So I looked into it. It took me like two seconds. What the fuck was I doing at five o'clock in the morning? I don't know, whatever. But I would think that if my name popped up in some mean ass shit like that, I'm assuming it's mean at first. And I'm just out of that context, it's like, oh, it's not as mean. I already see like they, they're trying to pick books of some significance for something. I don't know. So if the two books were a Sarah Dessen novel or Just Mercy, and we were clearly from this, like, hopefully going to get a chance to meet a person involved i would want to meet and be able to discuss as a college student something with the author of just mercy who was a lawyer who wrote that book moving on i mean i i'm i'm just saying in looking more into it i found out that the article in question that was published was published by northern state university to commemorate the 10-year anniversary of a program they instituted at their school called the common reads program um, at first it was kind of like a book club for books picked for the honors students and then those books because they were so culturally significant and impactful then became required reading for the entire freshman year. This, this is where I was like okay I'm getting a better picture and Sarah's tripping just just a smidge like the words are still out of be like oh damn fine for kids you didn't have to say it like that but yeah I would I would like have some sense of self-awareness like I know what I personally am writing and I know what the subject matter I'm writing for or writing about would be appropriate for and inappropriate for if I'm writing some books that are impactful in that people love them they get enjoyment and escapism from them but there is not any kind of cultural punch to it I would know that and I wouldn't feel stung other than the wording she chose because the wording was a little ouch but um further than that like if they're reading books like To Kill a Mockingbird and Just Mercy and Hate You Give okay like that's not a book a subject my book need to be in can you read it for your regular book club though I'd appreciate that read it on Valentine's Day how about that I don't know read it for fun read it on Mother's Day read it just whenever the fuck but I would know further reading this article like yeah my book's not for that. I, that's some, some, some sense of self-awareness. I, I get that. It's, I, I, I had that. Like, it's fine. Yeah. No, Sarah Dustin didn't, didn't 
didn't have any of that because you, you saw today that she said it about your book but it, it was said in context like this book is inappropriate for you know a book club in which we are gonna be asking the author to come so we can talk to him about some significant things um impactful things and so that we as a class can discuss it as required reading let me walk my ass into nam university see my black is coming out anyway let me walk my ass into nam university not any fucking where sit my ass in this stadium seat just do 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 all right if you guys want to pull out your syllabus okay you'll see the list of required reading we have for the year does that say sarah Dessen? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. i'd be mad as fuck i'm not paying no money for any kind of class you to tell me that the required reading is sarah Dessen. now <laughs> because sarah Dessen had such a visceral reaction to i don't want to say visceral reaction it's not like she like screamed into the ether even though she kind of did even though she had such a strong reaction to it and was pretty upset about it as you can tell what made it worse was the several blue checked and not blue checked the several published authors in the comments who went in on this girl like some of them were support supporting supportive um, which I understand, especially if they just see that part and go, oh, that's fucked up, I'm so sorry. But it was the people who did shit like this that really bothered me. Siobhan Vivian, who is apparently a, a real life friend of Sarah Dessen, she says for 10 plus years, wrote this. Fuck that fucking bitch, that's, that's what that says. Talking about like a 21 year old person who said something three years ago. Okay, fine that's cool two years ago a year and a half whatever the fuck she didn't say it this week god damn it they just published a quote in an article from then talking about these books i think i don't know she could have said it this week whatever the fuck it's not the point and then tiffany jackson commented also ditto danielle clayton can i add a few more choice words to siobhan's brilliance fuck that raggedy ass fucking bitch oof 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 that made me go god damn that that's a bit much again not saying that the person like those words are not hurtful um i get it i don't nobody wants a thing that they love or a genre that they love or work so hard on to be dismissed like all i read everything i read is romance in it i am a lover of all things romance um that's another video i have come and talking about being a member of romance landia without screaming about it and why i don't scream about it a member of the romance landia community i should say um that video is coming later on but to attack someone for voicing an opinion if they don't like it to this level when the girl didn't really say your books she didn't say your books are trash she didn't say they suck she said they were inappropriate for this setting which they kind of are now here is my issue with all the backlash from the authors authors who had things to say about it are like roxanne gay nk jemison sabat hero i just showed you so these are not all negative things it's just some of these authors who um blatantly attack that girl the ones i have problems with both Danielle Clayton and and Siobhan Vivian have since deleted those tweets but the issue is that while Siobhan has kind of gone quiet about it um Daniel Clayton did for a little bit too but neither one of them ever actually apologized for being in the wrong and attacking somebody so Sarah Vivian said that um she's friends you know she's been friends in real life with this with uh Sarah Dessen for a while and she's gonna defend her friend yeah okay but you as a public figure a published public figure using your influence in such a way to attack somebody who just had an opinion it's like a celebrity um getting hold of the fact that somebody said you know i don't i don't really like um george clooney is batman and george clooney get his ass on twitter fuck you man goddamn asshole make me sick retweet it and everybody else in the comments here fuck you fuck you like nobody's entitled to a fucking opinion books just like any other form of media except for like the news which is supposed to be just given like un in an unbiased fashion but books uh are art just like sculptures hell furniture home decoration uh, paintings songs car design like anything artistic just like any other fucking media format they're not going to be universally loved. I fucking love Camaros. Some people don't like them. I don't know why you don't like them. Some people don't like them. I love certain authors other people don't like. 
other people love office i don't like do i think they are stupid nope i think we have a difference of opinion am i going to attack somebody for having a difference of opinion nope again still not saying that those words weren't hurtful especially had i read them about myself i'd be like "Ooh, you ain't have to do me like that though damn but i also wouldn't have been searching myself out for that um and i would ask my friends if you see anything hurtful written about me like that about my work don't tell them if they say something about me personally that's incorrect tell me that but don't you know if somebody said you know boo boo about my books i don't i don't want to hear it don't tell me don't i don't want to look because if i look i'm gonna feel like i need to react but i also pride myself on not reacting in that manner now because i know some of y'all gonna be like wait a minute bitch yes i do <laughs> i do react when people say shitty things on my comments i do but <laughs> Um, I do not, however, post something somewhere for everybody to see it and send all the people after that. When somebody posts a shitty comment or a racist comment or a stupid one that pissed me off and I'll retweet it, I delete that comment first from YouTube so that nobody can go under my latest video and think they can figure out which one I'm talking about and reply to that person. Unless they said something racist, in which case, fuck you. <laughs> if they said something stupid, though, or otherwise offensive, or think they're going to talk bad about me and go, why she do this? That's so dumb. Or I don't like you would give a negative opinion about me in any way, shape, form, or fashion. If I don't like it, just like I did when I talked about the person who was like, girl, you mispronounced so-and-so when I was drinking. I deleted the comment first from the page. And then I talked about it. So if people wanted to go look, they wouldn't find it. Because I'm not sending nobody to attack nobody else. I might talk bad about you. Bitch, you talked about me first. But I'm not going to do it on that public of a form and make it that easy for them to find. She could have easily said, you know, somebody said my books, you know, were just good for teenage girls. And that pissed me off. And left it at that. Nobody really, we would have really had to work to figure out what in the fuck you're talking about. A couple people may have found it, but it wouldn't have been this fucking witch hunt like this. But to deliberately like be and crossing out, quit acting like crossing out the thing was protecting that girl's identity because bullshit. Bull fucking shit. Oh, that just irritates the shit out of me. Anyway, um, so that's Sarah, uh, uh, Siobhan, Vivian, and that's what she said. You know, that's my friend. Okay, but you still shouldn't have in that format. You should have, you know, in her tweet, text her, DM'd her. And I think she said something to the extent of, you know, I'm going to communicate with my friend in the whatever format I choose. Okay, that's fine. But don't be surprised if people call you an asshole because you were kind of being an asshole. Now, with um, Donya Clayton, it has kind of turned into a race thing. Don't ask me why, because the issue wasn't really racial to me, I don't think. Um, but when people started getting in Danielle Clayton's case about what she said, she turned it into a, a case of white feminists coming for her as a black woman using the word bitch. No ma'am, that ain't, that ain't what happened. But let me show you what I mean. I'm not making shit up, yo, watch. Okay, so someone said, I'm just catching up on this whole thing and my immediate reaction is white women have no, this is in response to a tweet that Danielle Clayton tweeted that has since been deleted but it's complaining in some form or fashion by using the word bitch. Someone said, wait, why are we arguing about this? Who did what? And she said, from what I understand, white women are doing a racist ass finger wag at Danielle for using the word bitches, saying it's unfeminist. Now, from what I can see in response to the tweet that was initially deleted, some people were, you know, basically saying that's, that's um, integrated, uh, systemic, like internal misogyny to be calling a woman a bitch. Okay, fine. It kind of is, but it is what it is. But um, Danielle is saying, well, no, her argument is that, you know, as a black woman, people call us much worse. Like we can be called the N-word and all kind of other shit. Like bitches to us, we use bitch in all kind of all kind of formats, all manners, like so. She said, do white women just not like the word bitch? Have they not reclaimed it? Black women use it in a lot of different ways. It's one of my favorite words, legit top 10. Lord, somebody help me explain. To which people are replying shit like, uh, there's seriously nothing quite so delightful to me as a black woman using bitch to express all admiration, intense pleasure. Danielle said, right, it's amazing. Like, bitch, I see you doing your thing. Makes me love us. Black women are the best. That's not really what the issue is, though. When you turn it into a race thing because of, it would just happen to have been a white woman that was like, y'all, you fucked up for that. But as a black woman, I'm saying too, like, y'all, you fucked up for that. Like, coming for this person for voicing a negative opinion like uh, if you cannot handle opinions about your work maybe get off all platforms where opinions may be shared about your work none of the authors who so publicly like 
filleted this woman because that's what happened. It turned into a fucking witch hunt. They doxed this lady, okay? Um, none of them apologized. Case in point, Sarah Dessen basically went on a deleting spree. Who boy said that. And then after which, um, another one, who boy, lesson learned. Well, what was the lesson though? That you shouldn't publicly be such an asshole about stuff like that. Don't search yourself out on the internet. Are you actually sorry that you did it? Like, I don't know what it was in reference to. It could be taken as a lesson learned, like, ooh, that blew out of proportion before I knew what that was about. But something tells me from this string of tweets like this, I'm deleting these, I'm not gonna, the, the, the like tone of these tweets makes me think she's not apologetic about that, which bugs me because you started all this crap and sent all these people after this lady essentially for what having an opinion oh child you a hate my black ass because when i don't like something capri once said um on twitter and i see if i can find it because this shit's hilarious i love it um something to the extent of when they were talking about recommending booktubers um capri tagged me and said like yo lauren will look you dead in your soul and shred your favorite book and to this day that is a favorite my favorite thing that anybody has ever said about me on this platform as the fuck out because fuck yeah that's not a bad legacy to have because i what i enjoy about it though or what makes me happy about it is that people don't really get mad at me when i shred apart their shit because i'm doing it like it's not like i'm doing it to be a dick at least i feel like i'm making valid points but I also do i don't shit on people for liking it either so i'm like if that's what you like and i have a problem with it i'm gonna tell you why i don't like it but power to you i acknowledge that you know it's entertaining but these are the things that bothered me oh sarah doesn't hate my ass because i will shred the fuck out of anything if i don't like it i will shred i'm sorry furthermore uh these people are authors the majority of them commenting like i'm assuming your reading comprehension is supposed to be on point Furthermore, um, Danielle Clayton is a published author as well as a sensitivity reader. You really mean to sit here and tell me that you don't understand the nuances of the way in which you use the word matter, uh, using the word even everything in that sentence contributes to the problem surrounding using the word. For instance, yes, since we are saying white women don't do this, which I think is not true some white women do but whatever since we made it a race thing black women use the word bitch casually yes we do friends well hey bitch what's up i also use hey stupid what up foe man you dumb hey dumbass and it, the tone matters okay the tone matters just like you said we use it to express all kinds of things we still use it negatively now should any of my black friends walk into my apartment or the same apartment but walking right now hey bitch what up dummy what you doing come over here so me ugly and, okay but if somebody go, man, fuck you, you raggedy ass bitch, then I'm like, what did you just call me? I got your bitch. I got your bitch. Like, there is a difference. Even among black women, don't act like the shit's never negative between each other. Don't, don't play like that. You are displaying a level of willful ignorance that I cannot get behind. Like, you are too culturally sensitive, not culturally sensitive. You are too sensitive to issues in diversity to try to, like in such an ignorant fashion play that card now i am not okay with that that really kind of burns me up and then to further just delete all the tweets and not acknowledge that whoops i was wrong if you would have just went you know what i didn't know all these other things while i feel it would have been like i'd have so much more respect for any of the women who were in on this if they just went you know what i was wrong or not even i was like you don't have to say you was wrong if you can just it I would have so much more respect for any of the authors involved in this if one if they would just hey um i still feel like it's very shitty to, to disregard a book as being it's fine for teenagers and not being significant but i didn't understand the full context of what was going on i didn't see the whole article i didn't know what else was going on but it was wrong for me to publicly call a girl a bitch like that or whatever just acknowledge like hey i didn't know everything that was involved and you may have to apologize for saying that but don't turn around and try to like turn it into the race card to immediately disregard the shit white people are saying especially as somebody who was accused last october when all that booktube becky shit started 
um, of hiding behind the race card. No, in that issue, she brought race into it. In this one, race was not even involved. We were talking about a genre of book, and now here you go. Oh, here these white feminists go because I said, no, 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 no. I, that's cheap. That is a cheap trick, and I, I don't like it. It's just like some women do that shit when they're in an argument with men, and there are times few and far between where men have a valid ass point and women are just like well you don't get it because you have a dick no in this one boo you in the wrong and when people point that out oh you're just you just a tool of the misogyny the misogynist fucking patriarchy or some shit like god damn it have some sense of accountability look I, it sounds like i'm coming for her as a person and i'm really not because i'll tell y'all like i from what little I know about her as a person, I actually really like Danielle Clayton. I am here for a clap back queen. Like, bitch, don't say nothing to me if you don't want me to come for your ass. But <laughs> jumping in something wrongfully and attacking somebody who wasn't doing what you thought they were doing is a good example of when keeping it real goes wrong. Any of y'all old enough to remember that or know what I'm talking about? Probably not. Anyway, not keeping it real in the manner of like you always speaking the truth, but just like always speaking what's on your mind just coming out and just going zero to a hundred sometimes that shit backfires and this is one of those cases and instead of you know going oh you know i didn't know all of the facts sorry guys that's all she had to say you didn't even have to retract anything you said didn't even have to imply in any way that you sorry for saying fuck that raggedy ass bitch all you had to say was um i didn't have all the facts i apologize and left it at that you don't have to say I apologize for calling her bitch if you don't apologize you could still think that was a bitchy thing to say but don't like blast it like that on social media when you are s don't have all the pieces and then have people in the comments like going hey the actual issue was this and they were saying that the book should have been put over a book by an author of color talking about a black man who was wrongfully accused in the justice system and they all just ignored it and that's what's really bothered me so this blew up so much that the university actually apologized and that that is not something I'm here for either and let me tell you why a college a university whatever you'd like to call it is supposed to be fostering this environment this culture of uplifting and encouraging individual thoughts and academic thought processes and academic back and forth right um, pr most professors that I have dealt with and that friends have dealt with have are okay with you challenging them if you make a valid point like I get points for going oh wait but what if it's this oh that's a good thought Lauren thank you for that like they like the back and forth I don't want you to just sit here and, and take what I'm telling you and just be a puppet I want you to be able to think for yourself acknowledge you know the fact of what I'm teaching you but if it's especially for like sociology and politics and shit a lot of those professors are like yes let's go back and forth let's debate this shit let's, let's please like come on let's do this like they appreciate that especially if you write a what's, what's what do you get how do you get ready to write a paper right it doesn't matter if you agree with the subject matter or not but if you don't agree you just have to be able to give valid reasons why like there are plenty of times where i've written papers and they have been like y'all know me ripping something apart right but they've been shredding something on no I don't think that you know I thought this book was trash because or I, I don't agree with the subject matter I don't agree with the lecture or I don't agree with the idea of people as a whole are generally one thing or another because I wrote a lot of sociology papers that fucking wrecked yo anyway <laughs> um but if I could give valid reasons and points of why and examples like follow up examples so I know this is incorrect or know this is inappropriate or know I don't believe that still got an on paper the teacher could have been all the way um uh, uh atheist and i could have been all the way christian but if i can write a good ass paper proving my points and why i believe and felt this way with examples clarity spoken clarity spoken I don't know. still got a good grade now i didn't write religious papers but that's just like two opposite spectrums i could immediately think of so yeah, like university is supposed to be nurturing this development of like critical thinking and individualized thinking. Like what university wants to just issue out sheep that don't think for themselves because those aren't world changes, right? Universities want to be the ones to say, yo, like we, we, we have this great, this great alum. Like we have this, uh, like they want to be able to claim somebody who did something right, right? Who did something great. Like, yo, Steve Jobs went to our school. He only went for five minutes, but that's us. Like 
the university is like being able to do that shit. Yo, that kid, that kid that came up with that vaccine, or this person who who fucking cured cancer or or created, you know, um, uh, this device to get better use out of gas or less harmful gas, or who created those solar windmills and shit. They went to our school. So why are you apologizing for opinions given by people? Opinions that really don't hurt nothing. Just because the opinion said, hey. Um, I don't like that book. You don't apologize for that. Like, that's what our student felt. Like, back her up. God damn. Like, she didn't say nothing hurtful. What she said was not racist. It was not problematic in any way. It hurt someone's feeling. It hurt a subset of people's feelings and that, you know, the opinion was harsh. I don't, I don't really feed much into YA. But to tell a school, like Angie Thomas did, like, yo, you know what? Don't read my book again. And how about that? That was a very emotional response for a person who doesn't even go there anymore. The person who voiced that opinion is not even a member of that anymore. They're just saying like this person thought that these books weren't appropriate because they were kind of childish for what we're trying to do here. It just, it, it just all feels a bit over the top. And like I said, I do understand the hurt feelings. I get it. And I do like that. God damn, I'm hungry. Sorry. Um, I do feel like it could have been worded better. Like maybe the thought was a smidge incomplete when she said it or it could have done with some tweaking or just some thought like not just hey yeah i mean they're fine for teenage girls but just like in a way that highlighted the fact that she meant or that is implied more heavily that it's inappropriate for this group for this reason not it like because it is why yes or it's why with these themes and nuances because if we really Never mind. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not gonna get into that. I ain't got time to be fucking with y'all like that today. <laughs> but um, for a literary community, right? Because this is what we are—a literary community that includes the readers, the publishers, the um, editors, the authors, reviewers, everybody. Um, people are blatantly ignoring context in this case. Blatantly ignoring context and blatantly ignoring nuance to like wave torches and send this witch hunt after somebody who voiced um an opinion never mind the fact though that she was part of a community meaning a committee she's part of a committee so unless there was two people on that committee one person saying no this book's inappropriate i don't like that book is not gonna be the reason that book is not voted multiple people had to feel like that was not an appropriate book for this choice and multiple people did so like vilifying the school for one person's opinion and then turn around and vilifying that girl for saying that like she one monkey don't stop no show okay one poop flinging monkey. She could have been the poop flinger. But for like for them to shut down the whole circus, it was a lot of poop being flung and she wasn't the only monkey, okay? It had to have been more than one person that felt that way for the book to not get chosen first. But she was part of a committee. It wasn't just her. Now, it's unfortunate that she was the person in that article because I think now she shut down her so her social media because uh, so many people have went for her shit. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, understand stan culture, guys, and that yeah you're gonna love your fave and you're gonna want to defend them but understand that these people are not infallible and just take a second just take a second to look further into an issue especially if it's a, it's an easy one like this article right there read the whole fucking article yo like jeez <sighs> it just it, it's just frustrating furthermore like my last point is i find it hilarious that it doesn't seem like anybody actually went to go look and see what books were chosen because the hey you give was like angie thomas said because they've read one of her one of her books so is ready player one why books i think ready player one's a white book if not whatever the fuck but both mo books that more young adults than adults go for but what y'all are not looking at is look at what angie thomas's books is about and look what sarah Destin's books are about police brutality the cultural effect of police brutality on black people on people who are ignoring the fact um, of white people who are ignoring the fact that police brutality is an issue with black people and how right now society is dealing with all of that and the effects it has on all of the involved parties including police black people and people of other races people in this community where these things are happening and look at Sarah Destin's books I'm gonna pull up I'm gonna pull up one to show you instead of just saying her books as a whole the truth about forever 
That's what Macy has to look forward to while her boyfriend Jason is away at brain camp. Days will be spent at a boring job in the library. Evenings will be filled with vocab drills for the SATs and spare time will be passed with her mother, the two of them sharing a silent grief at the traumatic loss of Macy's father. But sometimes unexpected things can happen, things such as the catering job at Wish with his fun-loving chaotic crew or her sister's project of renovating the neglected beach house awakening long buried memories. Things such as meeting Wes, a boy of the past, a taste for truth telling, and an amazing artistic talent, the kind of boy who could turn any girl's world upside down. As Macy ventures out of her shell, she begins to question her sheltered life. Now, this book, I'm not saying it's not a feel good, like impactful book, but when you're putting it against things like Ready Player One, which has a lot of um, societal points to be made in it, um, and then the Hey You Give, which has a lot of points to be made about um, society as a whole with colorism, with racism, with uh, issues with um, not an authoritarian government, but people of authority and issues um, that arise when they abuse that authority. And then the issue of uh, racist warring over whether one really even believes these things are happening or not and then what happens when people start to turn on each other because everybody doesn't have everybody's back among like black people and white people and the things that are happening to black people like there are allies but people as a whole are taking the mentality of well you know shouldn't shouldn't um uh, 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 back talk the police then shouldn't be a criminal shouldn't do this or that like that's the kind of thing I'm talking about so which one is more impactful for students to open up dialogue and critical thinking and get to talking about hard-hitting subjects which is what you want in a college is it not compare the two so I think this whole thing got blown away way the fuck out of proportion. Do I absolutely think that it was hurtful to read and would it have been hurtful to anybody to read out their book? Was it hurtful also for authors of um, YA books as a whole? Absolutely, yes. Think that could have definitely been worded better, but I also think that it was still like not completely, it wasn't meant to be just a massive dump on YA books or the YA genre. I just think like it, it just, it just, it's blew the fuck up for no goddamn reason, basically. So I just got back home. I don't have my glasses on. That's why my vision's furry. It's like, maybe my prescription? No. I just got back home and saw that an hour ago she posted an apology. Uh, it says, something important I'd like to say. And then it's one of those notepad apologies, like screenshots, some shit you typed up on your phone in notepad and post it. Two days ago, I chose to post a screenshot of a quote from a newspaper article that was critical of my books. I want to apologize to the person who was quoted. I'm sorry. Like most authors, I hear all the time from people who don't like my work. It's part of the job. With a platform and a following, I have a responsibility to be aware of what I put out there. I know this apology doesn't change what happened, but I am truly sorry. Moving forward, I'll do better. You know what? Fuck this. I know I said, like, uh, I'd be okay like, if we had an apology from most of these people involved. Looking at this apology, fuck that. Let me tell you why this is a weak ass apology. Because why the fuck did it take two and a half days until like fucking uh, Jezebel and Washington Post and the news, like TV, everybody started saying, you know, what the hell. And then when those people started commenting, what the fuck? Now, now you're like, ooh, because it's not just Twitter, maybe. I don't know. But not only that, but that doesn't change like People were attacking this person. You, your ass was malicious. It wasn't just I posted this and it blew up. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. For two days, two fucking days, she went in these damn comments, liking the ones that was calling this girl names, all these raggedy ass bitches and stuff, replying to them and saying, you know, um, oh God, I love you, thank you. Like, and you just send that flat ass, I'm sorry. No. No, no, it needs to be a better apology than that because you also need to apologize to the authors who now look like dickheads with you for riling them up inaccurately, inappropriately, wrongly so because you, you engineered this shit. You cropped out something to make it look like you were just wrongfully being attacked with no context. There's that word again, con fucking text. Got everybody all wrought up and you're just like two days later after this girl has been run off of her social media platforms and shit. Hey, I'm sorry. I'll do better.
the authors need an apology. Also, those authors need to fucking apologize for the name calling of this person. The school needs an apology. That, I'm sorry, that is not an apology. That is not how you apologize for something of this magnitude. That flat ass apology, this is the kind of apology you get, or you give, when you eat your baby's pop tart and she was gonna take it to school and, and eat it for breakfast on the bus on the way to school and then she looking for a pop tart and she ain't got it. Now she gotta eat these nasty ass granola bars that you were supposed to eat and they're healthy and she don't want that shit. That's when you go, oh, I'm sorry, I'll do better. Just go ahead here, have these instead. That's that kind of apology. That kind, This kind of apology is the equivalent of your significant other cheating on you when you're in a monogamous relationship and coming home and just like looking at you in all your fury and just rolling their eyes at you for two fucking days and then you know what, somebody down the street is like, Nick, what the fuck? And then they, they come back two days later and go, you know what, babe, I'm sorry, I'll do better. You'll do better, bitch. But wait. There's more. So Siobhan has now posted an apology or she posted hers a couple hours before, like right after I filmed apparently, cause hers says three hours. Re, my recent suckage. And the note says, I'm truly sorry for my uninformed and incendiary reaction to Sarah's tweet. I posted it without thinking and without fully understanding the context of, lar of the larger discussion. In the future, I will do my best to get a fuller picture and consider the impact of my words before I tweet. Sorry. These are authors. Published fucking authors. I'll get a fuller picture. Sorry. Not only that, but she put her account private. So who the fuck can see it? God damn it. I have a fucking headache. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, screenshots, I don't know why I even saw that shit because I went to go look at the whole thing and her page is private. Like, the same way y'all was hollering and cussing and carrying on and going off in this girl is the same way y'all need to be out and about with these apologies. Don't send no one little punk ass thing and let it go and it be old super fucking quiet and nobody sees it, no attention is drawn to it. Now the way y'all was hollering, you need to holler now. So I need to sit down and like look into all the rest of this and quit turning this camera off and on and off and on. But I found another apology. This one, a decent one, a good one by Roxane Gay. She says, I absolutely messed up. When I responded to Destin's tweet, I didn't realize the article. I didn't read the article, just a screenshot. I related to a fellow author feeling the sting of criticism. I had no idea the young woman was not anonymous or was being harassed. I apologize for my part in all this. I still call bullshit because beforehand when they said, you know, hey, everybody can find the girl you was just like yeah, I didn't know that and it just left it alone and didn't do this until now it's going more public and y'all like oh my money y'all might fuck that up the next tweet <laughs> says I would definitely do better and be more mindful moving forward I made a mistake so th so far better than Destin's half-ass like weak written ass like you were author and that's all you got ass fucking apology that didn't even address the shit she apologized for and only apologized for one out of the million things and then her friend also published Siobhan's apology where she essentially just said you know I, I need I need to get a fuller picture and sorry and then she put a page on private but you wasn't private when you was cussing that girl out though calling her names and shit that was public and that was fine but you know i'm gonna put my apology leave it up for like an hour and then y'all can't find that no more never mind i was talking cash money shit about this girl unapologetically defending your friend and saying yeah i called her bitch because this is my friend and i'm gonna defend her that shit stayed up for two days though mm. Mm. so i would just end the video saying this that all this happened in the first fucking place was a damn fucking shameful ass mess all of the authors who were involved and did not even bother to click, not just in the beginning, but once people started saying, hey, that's not what this is, shame on you. Fucking shame on all of you. Like, I am so very disappointed. Like, that shit just fucking hurts me. I'm like, God damn it. Like, I stand these people. What the fuck? Uh, furthermore, that apology was whack as fuck. I told you, it, it needs to match what the hell you did. And furthermore, you need to apologize for everything that you did because you're responsible for an entire shit show. The fact that this went on two days and it took like national news to pick it up before you're like, oops, mm mm, mm mm, fucking mm. <laughs> no. Um, and then I would just like round this all out by saying this. 
when black women do shit like this, why is it that everybody jump in the comments, whoop the whoop, cancel culture is such a problem, wah wah, blah 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 blah. But when this white lady get her ass on here and for two fucking days and some change goes on a fucking rampage, I didn't see not nam message like, why are you always with this cancel culture? I did see people complain about doxing that poor girl, but it was the same people who did research and went, what the fuck, bro? As a whole, this is wrong. But not nam nobody. Y'all not ready for that conversation. Y'all not ready for that conversation. You know what? I'm going to just leave y'all with that thought. Incomplete as it was. And I'm going to get the fuck out of here. So I can edit this video. Because. Mm -mm. Bye.